Today we're going to try and put an end to flats on the back of this bike. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrestle this pretzel-like piece of rubber onto that rim and make the tire unflattable. Stick around. Okay, let's get started. The first thing they tell you to do is to remove the rim strip from the rim. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. I've already kind of got it started, but it's a pretty simple process. This is just a plastic uh, piece of tape that's designed to keep the spokes from puncturing the tube on the bike. But since we won't be having a tube anymore, uh, we don't have to worry about the spokes puncturing it. And Tana says that to make it fit well, it needs to have this tape removed. Feels like I've gone around about three times already. There it is, rim tape removed. The next thing we need to do is to grab our calipers and figure out what the inside diameter is on this rim. So, take my calipers and we'll figure this out. So 21 millimeters is what we get on the calipers. And uh, they give you three different types of tabs to mount it. So there's the red, I don't know if you can see that, gray and, and blue, uh, three different tabs. So we just have to pick the right one. So it's not the, whoops, not the red. The black comes in pretty close. Yeah, so I think it's the black we're gonna do. So black tab it is. So next we're gonna set the wheel aside momentarily and we're gonna put the tabs into the tube or into the tire. Now they say that you should stretch this out, so this is I guess where I get my uh, workout. It's still kind of pretzel shaped. We'll see how this goes. It's fairly warm today, so I'm just gonna try and work my way around and pull that out a little bit. Call that good for now. Who knows? Okay, so I'll give you a bunch of these, so I'm just gonna put them on a stack here. It's important to put the flat side, there's a flat side and a curved side, and it's important to put the flat side uh, toward the outside of the tire. So what we're going to do is we're going to just push this into the tire, like so. I guess that's it. This must be the easy part. Perhaps this is the part where we'll do a fast forward. Okay, I've been working on this for about 10 minutes. They do give you this tool, I forgot to mention this, this little push tool that allows you to uh, mash these buttons, these little tabs in. Um, so I'm down to the final three. So I thought I'd just talk through these. I put them in flat side toward the outside of the tire and then you push them in to these holes and I'm not sure I've got them all even or correct or anything because it's my first time with this but we'll just keep pushing them into where I think they should be and then we'll do the I'm sure the far more difficult task of mounting it because if you've ever mounted like a Marathon Plus, you know how challenging that can be. Um, this, I think, promises to be equal. I've got a couple that are sticking up a little too high, so I'm just going to go back and use this little tool and mash those in just a smidge more. Smidge is a technical term. You'd have to look that up if you don't know what that is. Let me just feel around there. That feels... Well, look at that, there's one missing. So, you don't want to miss one. I'm gonna put that in. I thought I was done, but I'm not quite done. Probably a good idea to make sure you have all the tabs in. I'm sure it's gonna just comply with my wishes here. I'll probably push them in too far or not far enough. Because I imagine they have to be pretty well centered to make it engage on the rim. Okay, one other thing to note I don't know if you can read this, but there is a direction indicator here. 
that tells you that which direction the tire is designed to go. So after reading the instructions, here we go. This is going to be the, the tough part. Normally you'd find the, the valve hole, but since there isn't any valve, you don't really need to worry about that. We should be able to get this thing on here with using our handy human thumb levers. And we'll see if that works. If not, we're going to get medieval and get the other one to get that tool and help stretch it on. Oh, man. I can tell you already. Maybe it's because it's the end of the day after work. But I can tell you already this is going to be difficult. I'm going to try and work those into that rim. Boy, that's a satisfying click. That's what I look for. This is that kind of, oh boy. That's the kind of audio reinforcement I need. I just need some, something to let me know that something good is happening. Okay, now, what happens here? How are we gonna get this bit over the rim? I feel like we're making such progress. Tight. You see, you can roll it with the palm of your hands like you do when you mount a tire, but I have not seen that to be the case yet. I feel like I'm close to that. Oh. This is no doubt one of the more difficult things I've had to do with a tire. Let's see if we can get some leverage. Oh, rah. Can get like a never ending hand cramp. I don't know how. I figure if I can get these to seat, it's supposed to lock, oh, that didn't lock. It's supposed to lock into that rim to the other part. What do I do? It says to roll it with your hands. Rolling it, rolling it. Oof. Did I mention it's hot? Oof. Sounds like it's such a good idea. Well, some time has passed. Uh, it's actually a few days after the last time I shot, and I came in uh, on my day off, because that's what I like to do, uh, to wrestle with this tire some more and inflict my will upon it. So, I have finally got it with the use of some zip ties and brute strength. Uh, I've got it, I'd say 99% together. Uh, now I'm just going to cut off the, the zip ties that I used and uh, then we're going to finish it up. And then we can figure out the riding part of it. I think putting these on may be kind of like what they say about childbirth where it's painful, the process is painful, but uh, once you get it done, it's you forget about the pain and realize it's going to be worth it. So these are supposed to be good for 5,000 miles. So we'll see if that is the case. So now I've just got to pop in these little uh, tabs and then it should be ready to test ride. The process of installing this is kind of like putting a uh, fully inflated tire and tube on a rim. It's not easy. There, well that was a satisfying snap, wasn't it? Kind of like that sound. Just got a couple more to get in. Ping. I think that's it. I think we've got it. Yeah, that looks good. So this has got uh, about the pressure equal to about 80 pounds PSI. So it should be a really nice ride. Um, and I guess we'll find out once I put it on the, 
bike and take it for a spin, or the trike in this case, and take it for a spin. Okay, so is the Tannis airless tire worth it? Yeah, maybe so. If you're interested in not getting a flat for 5,000 miles, uh, but want to take on the challenge of mounting it, I think it rides just like a regular tire. I think it, uh, it seems to handle bumps uh, exceptionally well. It's very difficult to mount, as I mentioned, but uh, if you're up for a wrestling match, I think it may be worth it. The cost is about the same as a new tire and uh, tube, and they come in popular sizes. Now, this one that I'm testing was a 1.75. I prefer a 1.5 inch width on the back of that gecko, but you know, it all works out. It's only a tiny bit wider. So yeah, I think I probably would recommend that. Will we start carrying it? I don't know. Maybe. I hope you liked this quick look at the Tannis airless tire. And if you did, think about liking and subscribing to my channel or come by Bent Revolution in Odessa, Florida. Thanks a lot.